All right, folks, welcome to the webinar. Thank you for coming today. My name is Aaron Smith. I'm a product manager here at Axiom. Here at Axiom, we make software to improve the lives of MicroStation users. We've been doing that since the early 1980s, and it's still our focus every single day. So today we're talking about CAD standards in MicroStation. So we'll go over some points on like defining your CAD standards and MicroStation's tools for checking your CAD standards, you know, making sure you follow them, you know. Um, and at the end, we'll talk about how Axiom's spec checker software, which is an add-on for MicroStation, um, builds on what MicroStation alone can do and saves you more time and also kind of helps you, you know, we do things to help you really understand what went wrong to potentially help you prevent standards violations in the future. We think that um, we think a lot of improvement can be made if we sit down with people, and we've been doing this for a few decades, if we sit down with folks that are really using you know, MicroStation and uh, other Bentley products, and we just sit down with them and we figure out what the pain points are, uh, where do they think they're you know, spending time that, uh, they don't need to be spending, and we try to drill down into those areas. So today, on CAD standards, um, you know, we'll just we'll touch for the most you know most of the time we'll touch on some things in MicroStation, and uh, you know these tools that I'm going over in MicroStation are available in all of the other MicroStation based uh, you know uh, products from Bentlink. You know, a, you know. Open Roads Designer and um, and so on. So there are for CAD standards like really four points of entry, like four ways to kind of go after CAD standards. First one is you know getting the standards right in the first place. Okay, you know that's good. You know element templates help with that um, in MicroStation. Uh, and then there's checking the standards as you go. Um, you know that's kind of being a traffic cop and checking. You know, you, you somebody places a, a cell and something pops up and says, hey, that cell is not <laughs> allowed in this project. What are you doing? Uh, somebody draws a line on the wrong level and immediately tells them. So you know, that's kind of live. Um, Axiom has software that software for that. We're not going to cover that today, but its name is Spec Monitor. It monitors what you're doing. Um, monitors your CAD standards enforcement. That's what it does. Um, and then, you know, the, another entry point for CAD standards is checking existing files, you know, like before a submission. Um, I'm going to show you some things in MicroStation to do that. And uh, Axiom Spec Checker, uh, you know, does even more in that area. So the final kind of entry point for CAD standards is sort of looping back to the beginning, preventing repeat violations, re preventing recurrence. How do you prevent people from making the same problems over and over? And, you know, there's no one answer to that. There's not, um, but we think that one important place to start is by helping you really see where your CAD standards violations are. And um, that's an important area where our spec checker software differentiates itself from like MicroStation's um, standards checker feature. Um, you know, we want you to know how you know how many of a certain problem there were and we actually want to take you to that problem when you have the time and when you want to see and when you're getting started take you to the elements that violate some standard and see oh okay this is what's going on that must be because blah and you can figure out oh i'm really missing some element templates we should be setting that up better or our levels are actually unclear or our dgn libs are set up wrong and we're missing some levels who knows right um there's so many ways that, you know, a standard could be just, you know, not followed. Um, we'll also talk about what's in a CAD standard a little bit, but I think everybody here is here because they, you know, know what's in a CAD, they do know what's in a CAD standard and they just want help with the day to day. Um, so we're going to talk about DGN libraries. Uh, DGN library is just a DGN file with a special extension. And, um, the uh, you know of .dgn lib and it's got a best special use and they go in a special place. I'll cover a little bit of that today uh, on the subject of standards. Um, you know, it's it's really tricky for me to show you just one way to do things because, I mean, even though I'm just one person and I've you know kind of got my way of doing things, 
I still want to do things a couple of different ways sometimes. If I've got a lot of time, I might do it a certain way. If I'm short on time, I want to do things a different way. Um, our software takes that into account. It takes into account that you are not always, you know, working on the same kind of problem in the same situation. Maybe you need something that's just super fast today, doesn't give you a lot of data, gets out of your way, gets it done. And then other days, maybe you're exploring and you want to find out exactly what was wrong so you can talk to the team and get them to do better next time. Um, sometimes you just got to submit. Sometimes you got to fix an emergency. All these things, you know, they're real. Um, so, you know, whenever I attack a problem, I look for multiple ways to solve it. And um, here at Axiom, we're always looking for what way just saves you the most time, um, but still gets you excellent results. So, you know, what's the right way? Um, what's the best way? It's a moving target. Um, today, I'm just going to cover a few bases, poke around in MicroStation. My hope is that you'll at least see things from a new angle after today, even just a little bit. And, um, you know, not necessarily from my point of view, but really maybe just, you know, adding a little bit to your point of view. So there's a lot to take in. I'll go slow. Um, bear with me, please. And I'm really glad you're here. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to hop into um, a workspace. So the workspace I'm going to go into, I'm going to go to just a delivered one with MicroStation, nothing special. I'm going to go to examples as a user. And there we are. And then it remembers that the last time I was in examples doing anything and opening a DGN, I was in civil. So that's pretty good. Uh, the file that I was last in was this survey. Fine. Um, I'll, uh, so there we are. So now we're in this workspace. This is, um, you know, really critical to what we're doing because this means I'm going to be able to, you know, my is going to find my, the right DGN libs for the kind of work that I'm planning to do and so on. Well, very, you know, this is my 101, not looking to, make anybody here a CAD manager, um, just, uh, you know, just covering where we're going and what matters. So I'll say open to that guy. So, you know, um, I'm going to just jump right now in sh around and show you just the areas we're going to be in today. So, you know, we're going to be in DGN libraries. So, you know, here I was in this one today. So I'll go to this one. It is unexciting as a DGN library should be. We've got, you know, some text in here that r reminds me where I am. So whoever at Bentley made this was really thinking of the fact that it's good to know that you're in this guy. So they put some text in here. Um, I appreciate whoever that was. Um, they ma you know, little things matter. So the um, fine, we're in a DGN lib. Um, we're going to go to, you know, do a little bit of, spend a little time in level manager. So settings, levels, manager. Cool. We've got some levels. Today we'll talk about where those levels are coming from. We're not going to talk heavily about levels, but uh, we'll do a little bit. Um, standards checkers. So uh, utilities, standards checker. Now with standards checker, you can either check your standards or you can set it up to check your standards. So I am in a DGN lib, which is where you do your setup, but I'll just pop up and check just to show you the box. So there we are, fine. You know, we'll be in here a little bit today. Um, can't do anything else in there while that's open. So you'll, uh, I'll cancel that to close it. Not so with uh, level manager, you can do stuff while it's open, thankfully. Um, okay, text style. So under element, you can define your text styles and you really want your text styles to be defined in a DGN library. And um, so I'm in my DGN library now, which is where you would want to do that. We'll spend a little bit of time in here uh, today. And as you can see, you can, as you, and as you know, I'm sure you can do other work while your text styles box is open. It's not like the standards checker box. Next thing, um, we'll spend some time, just a little in dimension style, so element. Dimension styles, we're not going to cover dimensions as dimensions. It's more about just standards management and where are those dimension definitions coming from and are there some ways that they might behave in a, you know, confusingly and that kind of stuff. So, okay, fine, you know, dimension styles. Um, now we'll also touch a little bit on element templates. So element, element templates. So, Element templates are, you know, if you, if you don't use them, that's okay. But if you do use them, you really need everybody truly using them to get the maximum value out of them. Um, our spec checker software, which I'll cover at the end today, 
it can work and help you with your standards, regardless of whether you use DGN libs. But if you use DGN libs, it can, you know, leverage that. If you don't use element templates, that's okay. If you do, that's also okay. Um, but so element templates, can you work on something else while you're in element templates? Yes, you can. So cool, good. That's kind of, that's some of the stuff we're going to do uh, today. Some, you know, basically where we're going to spend our time. Um, now, this presentation is called Taking the Pain Out of Managing CAD Standards. We're not going to take all the pain out. I mean, there's no way to do that. And everybody's pain is pretty personal. Um, and every project is different. Clients are different. Um, so there's no one thing that solves everything. Uh, but we're going to take the pain away from some of you for certain things. And I think um, we'll cover some good subjects. So my hope is that, you know, some folks come out of here less confused by standards enforcement uh, and DGN libraries. Um, you might, maybe a couple of you just stay away from them. Uh, maybe you don't even have the rights to modify your DGN libraries. So why do you care? Well, we're going to cover some things for you guys as well. Um, even if you're not setting up this, the standards, you might be checking them um, and you might just be, or you're, you know, someone that is just making sure you follow them. And we'll only touch on that really from a, an element uh, templates point of view, but uh, there you go. So CAD standards, you know, they've been around for a long time. Uh, you can't really get away from them. Uh, maybe occasionally you have a small project with no standards. And, you know, there's the thing with standards is there's just any number of standards. You might have a national standard you're working from. Maybe you do it a lot. Of, maybe do all, all or most of your work for one DOT and they have one standard. And, or maybe they use, you know, the national CAD standard or some other standard, right? Um, the uh, maybe for some reason some folks here doing architectural work and they've got the AI standards and that's fine you know um, the the thing about this is maybe it, it's just there's so much variety maybe you don't even have a standard uh, and on some projects but you want to have a standard for your company to be honest with you a nice starting point for that is probably just going with one of your clients if you you know small firm and you don't have your own standards. Um, starting from your, you know, the standards of one of your clients that really has it together. You know, you can tell different departments of transportation, for example, um, spend more time than others on creating their standards, and a lot of them even share their standards um, with other DOTs. Well, of course, being a government body, they're going to share their standards. They're going to make them available, but other DOTs actually use them. You know, and which is great. Um, we are in Florida. Florida is a good example of a DOT that really cares about their standards. Um, but there are many, many other DOTs uh, that, uh, you know, that do as well. So, you know, where's the pain? What are some of the areas of CAD standards that could be painful? This, um, I'll close some of these guys. I'll leave level manager up because it's pretty and it's got lots of color, but I'm not doing anything in it right now. Um, where's the pain? Well, you've got, you know, figuring out what standards to create in the first place. What should your standards be? Well, we're not going to tackle that today. Um, but it's a thing. So that's if somewhere, somebody, if you have a standard in your hand that you follow, somebody figured out what it ought to be. Okay, that guy had a problem, he solved it. Um, then you've got documenting the standards, setting them up in MicroStation, um, deciding how you want to enforce them, um, figuring out who's gonna check them. People check their own standards after the fact. Uh, do you do no checking? Does somebody check standards of other people? What? Then you've got, you know, these documented standards and you've got to teach them to other people. Well, that's, you know, you could just give them the manual or you can do other things. There's a whole subject there. Um, then you've got things like setting up your standards checks. We'll cover a little bit of that today. Um, and then something we absolutely won't be covering today is how to actually get your users to follow the standards. That is definitely, can definitely be a challenge and, um, I would say that if you want users to follow standards, you could be heavy handed about it, but my experience is you get more with honey and making the standards so easy to follow, easier to follow than not following them is a winning approach. It's not a perfect approach because it's kind of sometimes always easier to just wing it. But if you make those standards really good uh, and not just the standards themselves, but using them, like if you use element temp templates or whatever, and you set up your levels right and sensibly, you're just gonna get more people using them. So 
time spent setting things up is worth it. Um, and then, you know, if somebody messes up and they've got, you know, you want to be able to communicate with them about their violations of the standard. So communicating to other people about their violations is a, another pain point. Um, you know, Mike Shishin gives you an XML report with standards checker of the things it found. It's not very human readable. Um, not really. Uh, you, you things you can do with it. Uh, also, Axiom Spec Checker gives you a more human readable, kind of humane um, report. Still has lots of detail, even more detail than Mike Shishin's. Um, but people can just pick it up and read it. So you can just hand it to somebody and they're in good shape. They can see what they did wrong. Um, that can save you a ton of time if you're the standards enforcer, but it wasn't, they weren't your violations. Um, you know, there's a lot more things, you know, than fixing your violations, uh, avoiding problems, deciding when to check, when to do your standards check. So you don't, you know, you're not late on submittals or, you know, you can't hold your submittal up. So you just don't check the standards and then it gets rejected. Maybe all that stuff. These are pain points and we're going to cover, you know, cover approaches to some of them today. So I hope this is a good use of your time. Hope you get something out of it. Um, for almost everything today, I'll be pointing at things and moving things around. It won't just be me talking with nothing going on on the screen. Um, so the, um, the approach we're going to take, I think the best approach is figuring out for yourself um, what's the most effective way to, to, to manage your CAD standards. And, you know, that is going to differ by client, by project, whatever. Um, so what I'm going to show you today is some of the ways that Microsystem makes, you know, lets you manage your CAD standards. And um, so I'll show you a lot of that. That's where we're going to spend most of the time. And then um, you will, at the end, as I said, we will get into the Axiom programs that work with Microstation and that they, in, you know, in which make CAD standards even easier to manage and, um, and maintain. So a CAD standard is really level, right? I mean, usually, what's, what, what goes into a CAD standard? Level, uh, color, so you've got to deal with color. Uh, you've got to deal with weight. Okay, cool, line weights. Styles, whether they're custom styles or the built-in zero through seven, the built-in eight styles in MicroStation. Um, font, you know, drawing scale, drawing settings, uh, design file settings, uh, text size for the font, dimension styles, back to the dimension styles box. Um, what, file naming. MicroStation doesn't really give you ways to, to enforce file name conventions, but Axiom's spec checker does. Um, well, we report on problems with file name, you know, file name, uh, misnamed files, um, automatically for you. Uh, you know, what are the names of your cell, cell libraries, uh, stuff like that and reference attachments. So this is, these are basically the things that make up most CAD standards. Um, but the big, the hot list, the common list in basically every standard is level, color, weight, style, font, text size. Boom. Um, now some companies are, you know, like, let's say your client, sometimes they're really strict about CAD standards enforcement. Sometimes they're not, that varies. Um, you know, sometimes your files will get rejected by one client for something that another client, maybe they have a similar standard, but they're just not particular about it. They'd like you to follow it, but they don't care or they don't check or you're submitting PDFs, you know, I mean, the whole thing. It matters what you're doing, and in the whole thing, there's all kinds of variability um, and potential for for pain and you know success and failure. Um, you know, if you get a project all wrapped up, you get it done, but you don't follow the CAD standard, you submit, client looks at it, and you know maybe the client just says fix everything and he sends it back to you, or maybe he tells you about all the things you did wrong. Maybe he runs Axiom spec checker or microstations standards checker on that file and gives you a report. Well, that's a pretty conscientious client. Um, but maybe they don't, maybe they just say, uh, it didn't pass our check. Can you just stop giving us junk and follow the standard we're paying you to follow? So that happens too. Um, so getting it right is really important. Um, but you gotta know what the standard is. And you got to kind of set yourself up for success um, by setting up MicroStation to, you know, and, and training your staff to, to do things right. Fine. Um, if you're starting out on a new project for a new client, you definitely want to get 
all their seed files, DGN libraries, their fonts, if they use Microsoft fonts or font resource files, um, line style resource files, uh, what else? Um, DGN libraries and so on, right? Cell libraries, if they've got a cell library, which they probably do. Um, you want to get all that stuff up front. Um, it's pretty obvious, but there you go. Now, um, in MicroStation, you know, you basically have to then put all this stuff together into your MicroStation workspace. Like I'm in this civil example workspace from Bentley that comes with MicroStation. Um, and so, okay, fine. You got to put that all together. Today I'll show you where our DGN libraries are defined and um, that sort of thing. Um, so starting with, you know, DGN libraries is, I think, uh, it's a good point. It's a good place to start. A DGN library, like I'm sitting in one right now, civil.dgnlib, top left here. This is just a DGN. As I got some levels in it. I got some other definitions, or maybe I don't. Maybe I'm starting from scratch. And I can set this guy up, and um, all these levels will go into the other files in my project. They'll see them. If somebody messes around with a level in um, a DGN, then... Mike Shishin will warn them kind of passively, but you'll get warned. I'll show you how it's, it's right here in this column and, you know, tells you, hey, stop doing stuff like this. Um, now, with your DGN library, you want to, okay, fine, set that stuff up. Um, let's look at levels for a second. Now, I'm in this DGN library. Uh, let's say I was for a minute in that survey drawing. So here we are. Let's find out by turning on my library column, let's find out where these levels are coming from. Cause these guys here that they're bold, so you know they're used. These guys are, um, well, they're bold, so you know they're used, but these guys are actually in this DGN. They're not coming from my library, which is a problem. Um, so here we are. I have now enabled my library column. These guys are external to a library. They're actually in the file I'm in. It's a little misleading, but okay. Um, these guys are coming from my civil DGN lib. Uh, they don't give you the extension here. Uh, MicroStation doesn't. The um, so there's that. Um, now, okay, the I fixed there. Good. No, nobody in here. Um, no levels are coming from that reference, which is which is right there. Um, so we got these levels. These guys are coming from that uh, civil DGN lib. And I mentioned earlier that if you start changing your levels that are coming from a DGN lib, you change them in your active file, MicroStation will warn you. And here's where it does that. So let me just go here and pick a different color. Instead of color zero, I'll pick three. And where is that guy? There, where is he? Let me just do one more action, paying attention to the name reference object. This guy. Okay, not changing. I don't know what I changed about my workspace. It won't let me change it here. I changed this guy earlier today and it was okay. Uh, maybe you have to do it on all levels. Let me try. Reference object. Not really. I don't know why. So what ought to happen is, and what happened to me well, about an hour ago, is you get a, you know, as expected, you get a little dot in the delta column. Um, and it tells you, hey, this guy has changed. So, and then if he does change, you can come in here and say update levels again, and it'll pull, it'll get rid of your overrides on this level and uh, pull them in from the DGN lib. Fine. Um, now, that's what that is. That's that delta column, you know, the triangle for delta, uh, for difference. Um, now, We've got these levels here with elements on them. They're used, you can tell, with the dot. They're bold. And, okay, this is the color they're set to, the style, the weight. Um, no interesting weights. And I'm going to go back into my uh, DGN lib. And But first, let's pretend I don't know where my DGN lib is for this project. I want to be thorough about it. So let's go to Workspace configuration and microstation and I'll just do alphabetically I'll go down to ms underbar 
DGN library. There we go. Good. MS underbar DGN lib list. This is defined at the project level. So notice that. Um, so this is in my civil project in a project config file in my MicroStation workspace. If I run some other project, this guy would be potentially defined differently. It's pointing at three places. If I float over here, it's pointing over here for DGN libs. Um, it's pointing over here. And it's pointing over here. And this is the one where I'm find where it's finding my civil DGN lib, which is the one I'll be in today and change some settings in. So that's where that one is. Um, now, you know, I'll touch on some standards setups. Um, for that, you want to be in that DGN library, which is why I came here. This is how you find out where it's looking for DGN libraries. It doesn't tell you which one has a particular definition in it because it's star.dgnlib in those folders. It's grabbing lots of things, but um, yeah, you know, it grabs things from you know any of those DGN libs. And um, so in this case, though, I know that it's a civil DGN lib in that folder. So I'll go file right down here. This happens to be him. I'd browse to him if I didn't know where he was or I didn't have him in my history. Open it up. All right, so we're back in here. Um, civil.dgnlib, civil.dgnlib. This is very much where you want to make your changes to um, element templates, text styles, dimension styles, uh, standards checker things. You, you do it while you're in your dgnlib if you're the person setting this stuff up. Um, so let's set up some text styles, just, just messing around to, to get into that box. So element textiles, and here we are. So let's say I want to do a new textile. I've got a new textile, call it, give it today's date. Just, you know, there we go. So I know later that it wasn't a real textile, um, and I don't rely on it. Okay, cool. So now it's here in this file and I like it. I'm happy with it. It is it doesn't have a check mark saying it's in my file. MicroStation will catch up here. Um, if I reopen this file, it'll tell me it's here. Good. So it's really defined in here with that check mark. I'll show you more about what that looks like when you're in another DGN, when not in the DGN lib for that. I'll float over it. You can see which DGN lib it comes from, which happens to be the file I'm sitting in, because we're doing the defining. So you come here and you you know you make some stuff. Let's go. I don't really need to change these values, but you can because you're here in the DGN lib, and this is the place to do it. Um, so set up your set up your textile. You're good to go. Um, make sure you save it, just like with your um, uh, dimension styles. If you set it up in here, you go style new uh, not saved. And you reopen your file, come back in, you lose it. Is that weird? Yeah, I think that's super weird, but that's how MicroStation works. And it's kind of good to know about some of the oddities. So you make, uh, make a new one, call it did save, style, save it. Now you reopen that DGN lib, you don't lose it. Anyway, that's how it goes. Anybody who had to, who's already, you know, set up their textiles, you know, for their projects, you, you know, whenever that was years ago, decades ago, knows that that's um, already behaves weird like that. But for those of you who haven't run into that, that's why they keep disappearing on you um, when you make new ones. So let's, while I'm in this textile, I'm going to jump into that other DGN, that survey DGN, and look at this. There's no check marks. So this textile definition is coming from the same DGN lib but it's not in my file. So as soon as I place it in my file, I'm going to get a check mark. And that means this, this definition has been pulled into my DGN. So it doesn't depend on the DGN library anymore, but it can tell me when it's different. Okay, that's pretty important, but let's, so let's just look around here. I can't change anything. That's good. Um, but let's say I want to play something with a textile. So 
Um, you know, it doesn't matter to me that it's even readable text uh, size wise and stuff. Um, pick a style. All my styles are coming from that library. So I'll just pick one inch and eh, I guess I'll zoom in until it's readable. And you see that plus sign? It's already like pulled that textile definition into my file. And then I place something. And so now I know it's in there. In addition to it being here, I can now edit that textile definition. I don't have to tell you that that is both good and bad. That is a double-edged sword. Um, let's say I decide that I want that to be a little bigger, 0 0.1 instead of 0 0.083. And you know my text gets bigger, but now I've redefined my textile named one inch. And I got the blue text now. It says DG, um, civil DGN lib. Um, if I click on something else, you can see that a little better that I have a little delta symbol on here. In the level list, it's just going to be a little dot. I don't know why it wasn't working earlier for me, but I'm sure it was user error. Um, the uh, But here, you get something a little richer. You get the delta here instead of a dot with a delta column uh, in a delta column. So what does that mean? It means I've messed around with my, I've redefined my style in this file. So instead of in DGN lib, so it doesn't match my DGN lib anymore. So this text, if I run like a standards check or something um, with standards checker or spec checker, it's not going to match what's in the DGN lib. It's going to be off standard. Um, it's probably not good. So I'm going to do a right click here and update from library to, I thought, get that guy back. Um, so there we go. That's back. I save it and then my delta disappears. Frankly, I think that that's not good behavior, but so it goes. That's how my tradition works, and that's why I'm showing you some of this stuff. Um, I think it should have gone away as soon as I loaded it in. Um, also, I think it should prompt to save on close. Totally doesn't, but okay. Um, now I'm going to close that, and I'll go back to text placement. Um, here you can see that this is defined inside this file, and so is this. These guys, I didn't see when these changed, so that should match the library. Let me reopen it and make sure. Could also just be that now I'm still sitting in the file, but it'll catch up with me once I reopen it. Let's find out. It did, good. So it was just freaking out about it, but I don't think I had changed them. Um, again, let's open this guy up, reopen him. I um, didn't change that. I just went into it, but maybe I tabbed through it or something. Who knows? If I click on this one, it doesn't freak out. If I click on this one, it doesn't freak out. I don't know why it was freaking out before. Um, so that's a little bit about how to get into here. This plus sign indicates that this is a local style. Um, there's no delta, so it matches my library. That's what I want. I don't really care if it's in my file personally. I just care that it matches my, you know, that if it is, it matches my library. Um, fine, here's my style list. Um, activate makes this my active text style, whichever one is selected. I'll select a few and you see you cannot activate it anymore, of course, cool. So make it active here and use it again. This is basic microstation, not really about standards so much. Um, so next thing, uh, kind of the next logical thing is line styles. Uh, I'm going to show you that line styles, though, are different. I mentioned earlier that they are not stored in your DGN lib. I'm going to go into my DGN lib um, just because I want to be kind of defaulting back to being there. But if I go here and say element um, line styles, and I can either you know look at my list of custom line styles or edit it, I'll say say edit it. I got none and do, if I do a file new, I'm going to have to choose a line style library to create, and I don't want to do that, or to create, um, you know, styles in. So today I'm not really, I'm not going to be doing that. Uh, it has the same extension as a font resource, uh, you know, RSC. Um, so that is that, and then if I go to Element, Line Styles, uh, Custom. I get a list of the custom line styles that are available to me right now in my current workspace. Um, okay, you know, um, nothing, I don't have a good list here because I'm not going into line styles today. Um, really line styles is its own hour of just, you know, webinar just to get started with them. Um, and then dealing with line styles in AutoCAD versus MicroStation and stuff like that, which is its own thing. So now dimension styles. Dimensions 
our dimension styles are pretty much managed like uh, very, very, very much like textiles are. So I'm still in my DGN lib. It's really important that you be in your DGN lib if you're defining these things and you're in some production DGN. That's not where you want to be because now those things are just going to be defined in that one DGN. And my station is not going to warn you um, because you're allowed to do those things. They're just usually a bad idea. So if you go to style um, here, it's much like maybe exactly, almost exactly the same as um, textiles. You've got new, you can activate it to make it act to make it your active uh, dimension style. You got to save them or you lose them. You'll get the same deltas on here and um, much different from line styles and very similar to text styles. The uh, these guys are already in my in my uh, current file, which is my DGN lib. So I got the plus uh, the check mark. Uh, I'll say new to create a new dimension style. I'll give it again today's date, so I don't rely on it for something. I know that it was just for one time use. Um, here we are, style. I know to save it, so I'll save it. I can also copy it or rename it. Do I want to rename it? Not really. Um, do I want to remap elements? Also, not really. I don't want to um, to, to push that out. Um, so here we are. I've got the the definition of this dimension style. As long as I did my file save, which I did, and uh, these guys are saved in my DGN lib file, it's not a bad idea every once in a while to do a file design for certain settings that might not go in. If you want to test whether your settings are auto save for any particular thing by potentially losing them. And that's how you find out. But it's also, it's just a good idea sometimes to just, you know, do a file design, a safe settings, control F, same thing. Um, and by file design, I mean, if you're in the Keen browser and you type file design, it's the same as a save, as a save settings or a control F. Um, and to get that box up, I just hit enter and it pops up at my mouse position, which is truly wonderful, actually. Um, okay, so dimension styles, this is not a, you know, today is not about setting up your dimension style, about, you know, ex all the things that can be going on with dimensions at all. Um, it's just about how to set them up as a CAD standard. When I reopen this file, it now MicroStation kind of catches up to the fact that they are the same, that, um, that it's in the file I'm in, which happens to be the same as the DGN lib. It's a little screwy, it's a little bit laggy, you know, there's a delay there, but it's fine. You're only setting these things up more or less once and then you're cool. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna cover and I'm gonna spend a little more time on it, but not not as much as I'd like to today, we don't have enough time, but um, is element templates. So I'm still in my DGN lib, which is where I wanna be for now, but I'll be jumping around. And I'm going to go to element templates down here. Click. So here we are. Right now, it's this is my active file, this DGN lib. And I've made some folders in here. You know, I could put some element templates in here for text, linear stuff. I can organize these however I want. If you've got element templates coming in your DGN lib from a client, then you've already got a much bigger list than this. But let me close this for a second and talk about element templates in use because maybe some folks here don't use element templates yet. So element templates are just here where you pick them from a list and you say, I want to, you know, I want this color weight style level and some other properties, uh, text size, that kind of stuff. And uh, well, that'll come from a line, uh, a text style, so not text size. Um, but I'll show you what the properties are that can go into an element template. But you do that and you go, all right, well, um, when I go to place a line, it's going to then have, I'll do an info right here, a template on it, or it isn't. So mine doesn't. Now, why is that? That's intentional, but it's really an easy mistake to make when you're working. So you've got this style. You come down here, you pick it. You think you're done like I did a second ago. I actually did. Um, but the fact is, it's not activated. So you got to hit activate, which is you know, okay, fine, just remember to do it. So you come in here, place a new line, I can fix this guy as well, but for now I'll just place a new line and I'll select that line. Now I can see that it's in my text group. It's got a template, see, text group, and it's called anno slash text template. Cool, good. So why did this guy happen, but the other one didn't? That's because I had it set active when I placed it. If I click it off, 
Now nothing's active. I can also go down to none and set it as active. So <laughs> I can have it off, which is none, or I can have it on, but set to none, or on, but set to something. So that's how that works. Um, I have a template on this one. Well, wait, now I selected something else. I'll select this guy. So, oh, maybe I, uh, maybe I, because I had him selected and I changed this template. So that changed what was set to him. Um, but it wasn't my intention to do that. I was just wanting to show you some stuff. But it actually was the next thing I was going to show you. Um, I was also going to show you, well, my plan was to show you that you can do it from here. You can come in here if you want to and do this. But is that good? No, it's not good. I mean, if you can stay out of element info, that's probably a good thing. Um, but you come in here and do I have a style here? Yeah, I do. I'll go to that one. Boom, shows up. Cool. Do this guy. He's got none. Come in here. Now, what I've never tried to do is set this with an active element when it was not set to active, like a selected element, and but this wasn't an active. So look at that. As I expected, but for the first time I've ever tried it in my entire Microtrition career, it, uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying it. It did not set this, and that is what I would hope that it would do. So we go turn it on, and now we come down here, pick it, we get it. So now this template is defined. What is this template? I wanted to show you guys how to do these, um, but why, right? Um, what you got here is, let me close. Well, I'll leave element information up. I don't think it's a problem. I'll close my dimension settings. For now, I'll close level manager, and I'll go to element and element templates. So what we've got is, this is the template I used. What's it defined as? Well, it, it's defined as if an element is set to this, you get it on a level called plan border. You can pick a different one. Um, you get by level color, by level line style, by level weight. Let's change it to hard code level three. Don't do that because by level is good, but you can do it. Um, now I've changed that in here and notice that it changed that element even though nothing was highlighted. So that definition changed the elements that use that template. Uh, it's powerful stuff. I know it's basics, but it's part of the whole area of standards enforcement. You got to know it, you got to cover it. And if you want to enforce your standards at an element level, you either got to have spec checker um, at, from Axiom, or you got to have uh, you know some tool that'll do that, or you got to use element templates if you want to use standards checker to do something in that area. Now, okay, so element templates, fine. Actually, let me go back there and do a new element template. So let's put it in a folder. So I'll put it in my text folder and I'll say, you know, new template and I can do a new definition and I can also right click on it. I can give it a better name than that as well, but I can go here and add and you're limited in what you can add. Um, some of the stuff's okay. One of the things that's really missing for me is I can't tell it that this template only applies to lines or only applies to shapes or text or these kinds of things. I want to be able to control element type and um, you know, uh, that's currently not available up through VDI Select Series 4. Um, I'd have to check and see if it's available in Connect Edition. So that's element templates. Um, element templates are not going to, um, also are not going to pick your element placement command for you. So if you want to pick an element template and have it, you know, place a cell, forget about it. Um, you know, I've got one here called tell template, but it's no good. Uh, if we go in here to its definition, um you can add stuff to it you can go all right cell there we go cell name now that i'm adding that to it now it's going to have some value because before it wasn't even going to give me the name of the cell to make active for my command i don't have a lot of cells in here but let's do that guy so there we go there we go um so it'll make that cell active but i still got to make sure that i hit the play cell command myself it isn't enough to just go like that there's no placement there. So again, it's fairly passive. So there's still some limitations. Um, next thing, I'm going to jump into standards checker. We are, um, uh, you know, we're going to spend some time in here. So utilities, standards checker gives you two choices, check or configure. I want to be in my DGN lib in order to configure it. So I'll do that. I'll say configure. And I don't need these two lines. So for now, I I think I'll get rid of those lines. Well, I'm now this, I can't do anything while I'm in this box, so I'll leave it here. Now, I'm setting up 
my standards checker stuff in here. So this maybe doesn't look like you're used to when you go to enforce it if you use standards checker. That's because I'm doing you know, the configuration. Um, this configuration, I can set up different settings names and I can go, well, I, sometimes I might just want to check levels. I mean, maybe. Uh, Axiom spec checker approach is better than this in my opinion, but this is, you know, you have a little bit of flexibility here. Um, you come in here, you go, what are the settings? What do you want? You know, what DGN lib has what you want? Um, what do you want to check when you check levels? Okay. Well, then I go here and I say, let's do a new one. Um, I'll call it levels only. I'll put today's date on it. And okay. So what I have now is a guy called levels only that will just set check levels. I'll save settings and I'll go into that other DGN and I'll go to uh, utilities, standard checker, check. What I get here is my choices from over there. So I can go levels only. I can go check it all, which is predefined with everything because I set it up that way beforehand. Oh, and usually that's what I want to do. But if I'm using standards checker, but if I'm just, just want to check levels today, I can do that. That way, if I'm just focusing on that, I can do that. I can You can predefine this whole list of things and just have the, the stuff on or off that you want and um, where you want those definitions to come from. This is still pretty limited, but this is, well, this is more or less the extent of what you can do with settings names in standards checker. And stand, so the output of standards checker is XML. You know, you can make a report. You can create a name group of elements that don't match your standards. And you can do, you can interactively sort of um, handle problems. So interactive is good. Let's turn interactive off and you'll see that you can't hit OK anymore. That's because there's nothing for it to do. If you're not interactive, you can't, you know, it's, it, you, you're not, have, not having it create a report. You're not having it make a name group. It doesn't do anything if interactive is off. So interactive is going to give you some choices. If you turn these guys on, that's still OK. Um, I'll just do interactive and I'll say, eh, I'll see if there's any levels to check in this. Good. So here's what we've got. This says the problem is that a level called survey exist pavement is not a standard level. Mm, OK, good. Well, that's actually pretty good for a level. But I want to tell you about something behind the scenes that is unclear here. If you have elements on this level, they're going to get moved to whatever level you pick. Plus, that level called survey exist pavement, in this case, is going to get deleted. That's not obvious. Um, but, you know, if you think about it, you definitely wonder if it's going to happen. That's what ha and that is what happens. Um, you can ignore this violation. You can fix it, which means change it to, you know, the, move those elements to this level and delete the level it doesn't like. Um, and this shows you what the current values and the new values are for the level. You know, so, and, um, you know, in this case, color weight style. And there's an override color um, on at least one of them. And, well, I mean, you've always gotten override color. So anyway, uh, do you want to change it to that or this or this? And this is the interactive mode here for standards checker. This is as good as it gets. Um, the thing is, I not only is this going to delete my level, which is probably OK, usually. Um, I have no idea if there are elements on this level. Are there 10,000 elements on this level? Are there five elements on this level? Are there zero elements on this level, right? So that's an interesting question. What happens if I'm in a file and um, let's do like file new, empty file with today's date, and I go standards checker tools. I don't have any weird levels to find in there, but I'll do that in a sec. Well, I got to do it now. So settings level manager, make a new level. Move this guy up so you can see my level name. Named him Rogue Level. Rogue levels are not always as obviously named, so beware. And now I've got a level in there, but there's no elements on it. I haven't placed anything on it. Never use that level. I'll leave info box around. I don't need it right now. So what do we do? We go standards, uh, utilities, standards checker. Check it. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Just do everything, whatever. Cool, interactive, OK. It still says rogue level this time is not a standard level. It doesn't tell me that there's one element, zero elements, a million elements on that level. And that's the kind of information that I really want if I want to prevent recurrence. If this is just some dumb level in the file that shouldn't be there, that's no big deal. But if people are putting elements on this level, I need to talk to those people and find out why they're using this level that they shouldn't be using at all. Is there some level that's missing that they really need and this is the closest thing they could find? 
did they make this level up because they were missing some the level they really need? Are they just confused about it? Or does someone think they're in a civil project, but they should be in some other discipline? Um, who knows? I mean, right? Did, what's going on? Knowing the scope of the problem, the real guts of it is really important. Um, so in this case, it doesn't matter. I'll just I'll just skip that problem. It found one problem and that's it. Okay, fine. That's okay. Now, that's standards checker and that's basically what you get. You can um, I'll bring it up again. Though, I'll show you some of those check boxes that I turned off. So utilities, standards, checker, check. You've got, you can check levels. You can check textiles. You can check dimension styles. We're still talking about file settings, not elements, um, line styles. But again, you know, you're not really finding out about elements here. Um, and then when you go to element templates, if you do use element templates, it can at least tell you that uh, if an element does use an element template, that it's off standard. Um, if, it, if you don't use element templates, then you're going to get nothing. Um, and if you don't use element templates, you just hope that your element is on the like some illegal level, so it does get found. Uh, Axiom Spec Checker is uh, builds on that very very comprehensively, so that you can actually find out what kinds of problems exist at the element level, what kind of quantity you're talking about, and um, just make better choices, you know? Um, so that's those checkboxes in Standards Checker. Uh, oh, you know what? I'll just for fun run a report so I can show it to you. Uh, do I want to make a name group? Nah, it's not important. I will say ignore that problem. It found one problem. And what it says way down here is, do you want to view the report file? I do, but I'm actually not happy with the format. I don't really want this thing to be in XML. If you want to do something with this data, use it somewhere else, that's cool. But for a file that only had one violation, this report wastes a lot of my time. I don't want to waste my time mm, at all. Uh, I don't want to waste other people's time either, but I really don't want to waste my time or my boss's time. So I'll close this thing. Um, I'll go over spec checkers reporting and stuff in a couple of minutes. So we've done the standards checker. Um, the DGN library is where all this stuff is coming from, most of it, you know, um, not line style definitions, but most everything else. And your workspace is pointing to those DGN library files and your workspace controls a lot of other things. Um, I'm actually a big fan of MicroStation's workspaces. Compared to say AutoCAD's profiles, I think MicroStation's workspaces are um, pretty great. They, they, you have a lot of control over things. That doesn't mean MicroStation's workspaces can't get out of control and under under designed, over designed, um, that kind of thing. But they're they give you a lot of uh, ability to express what you want and to have to mix and match projects that are pretty similar to each other, except for a few different things. They're pretty good. Um, in my, you know, that's just my opinion. The, uh, um, the thing there is somebody's got to set this stuff up. The, uh, you know, the DGN libs, maybe they're coming from client. That'd be great. Um, uh, if you don't have DGN libs, then what are you going to do? And all those other definitions that I covered, uh, dimension styles, we didn't cover them, but line styles textiles, doing your element templates, and all that stuff kind of has to be done. Well, all that stuff has to be done before people start drawing. Um, and that is the kind of thing you can do with, those are the things you can do with MicroStation alone, some of them. Um, you know, you can't visit elements that violate your standards. Our spec checker software does do that. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, that's the next phase of today's demo, and it'll be very brief um, because spec checker is very easy to use. Um, knowing, uh, you know, which element has or and how many elements have a certain problem really helps you, really helps me figure out what's wrong. So I'm going to show you what that's like. Um, first, I'll show you that Axiom's Spec Checker, um, the, uh, it's really two programs. It's Spec Checker and Rule Manager. Rule Manager is how you're able to set Spec Checker up with your CAD standards. So you can come in here and say, I want to work with DGN libraries, for example, and, um, Let's say this DGN is the one I'm in. That's all right. And I want to say start. So 
go in here and actually before I start, I'm gonna go to, instead of starting, I'll go to rule generation options. So in here, you can tell spec checker to look at design files and figure out your standards. You can also just tell it to look at your DGN libraries and to read those and um, enforce them in a way that isn't cookie cutter. You can actually say, you know, when I'm dealing with, um, you know, levels, I care or I don't care about their numbers. Um, you know, maybe I just care about the level name uh, or their plot setting or, you know, uh, maybe their override color. I had a color override earlier. So maybe I care about that. Maybe I don't. And you can set that up. And it's all very clear in uh, our rule manager software, which is how uh, spec checker, you know, that supports our spec checker program um, in letting you use your DGN libs if you've got them. So if you've got them, we can use them. If you don't have them, you're totally OK. Um, you don't have to use them. Um, and so I'll say okay to this. Our rule manager software can, you know, it does what it does. Now our spec checker is what you wind up using on a day-to-day -day basis to enforce your CAD standards. So I'm going to go to a DGN here with some interesting stuff, you know, interesting elements in it. Um, this is just an empty file. So I'm going to go to... I have in my history, I don't, so I'll just do that. And so here we are. So this guy has some, um, you know, all kinds of things in it. If I go in here, I'll say spec checker, I want you to run on the file I'm in. Now, it's really important that to know that you can also run spec checker on hundreds of files at a time if you want to. You can come in here, you can browse, you can grab folders full of files and open those and they show up in your list or you can just run one file um all kinds of power in here to make make lists of files run lots of them find out wait a second why you know maybe one of these files has a really old date and the other ones don't what's going on with that these are all micro tradition samples so they've got the dates that they have but if these are production files maybe they're all from the last year or so but then one of them is real old wait does that even belong what's going on we want you to have all that info um, but right now I'm just going to run in this one file and I'm going to say um, this is my file that has our sta my standards in it that I want to enforce and I'll show you what that looks like. First of all, I'm going to say search only which disables modification and then I'll run it with this off so it can actually let me modify. So I'll say also interactive editing. Interactive editing means a little bit more in spec checker. It means it's actually going to zoom in on the element with a problem. It'll even let you blink it. So you can come here and go blink. Which one was that? Okay, cool. I'll close element info. Um, so element on level A shouldn't be on level X. That is, um, or should be on level X. This is the error, and it's actually telling you about this particular element. Now, I don't have to hear about all of these. I can say, change every element that violates this rule of, you know, something has to be on level A, whatever the rule is. But in the very beginning, I want to know what's going on. Where are people messing up? Is it the same people? Is it the same department? Is it the same kind of problem? Like I said with the level earlier, what is that? Um, so it's really helpful when you're starting out, I think, and to, to find out where most of your problems are coming from. What's the source of them? Uh, maybe you can fix that because it's a lot better to, you know, it's cheaper to prevent something than it is to fix it after the fact. So, okay, fine, you can find out about all that and you can say ignore, you can go move on, move on, move on. And these guys are disabled because I said, you know, I just wanna look around and I wanna, I turn on search only because I don't wanna accidentally hit change. That's cool, that, that's a reasonable thing that works the way I want. Maybe you don't wanna work that way. Maybe you always wanna be fixing. So you can just turn that guy off, say start, and it's still gonna visit every element with a violation, only those, but now I can hit change to fix it. In this case, it'll fix the level. Or I can say, change every rule, that every element that violates this rule, just fix them all for me. And um, later on, I can read from my much easier to read report. It's not XML, it's just nice clean text um, intended to be read. Uh, I can tell what's up, you know, how many of these did I have? Uh, I can also just change everything that has a problem in the current model. Um, so I'll just say ignore and ignore. Element on level B should be on level X. Fine, ignore. Color should be five for elements on this level. So it's on level um, B or a level called work. And its color should be, you know, its color isn't five, so it ought to be. So our correction is to fix its color. So if I say change, it fixes its color. 
and then I can go on to the next one, you know. Um, color must be by level, not five, more, pro you know, telling me about that certain elements have multiple problems, and, I'm, and I can make the right choice about that element. I don't have to pick all five corrections for that element. I can pick just the one I want, and I'm not forced into anything. And when I'm all pretty happy about my choices, then I can just say, change them all. I don't want to hear about that rule anymore. Change them all, change them all, do the whole file. And then when I'm really feeling like I've got this dialed in, I can come through here and I'll say quit. Um, I'll undo, I'll control Z through this out of these changes. And you can just come in here and turn interactive editing off. You don't need to deal with this. And you can either search only or not. So if you have search only off, it'll fix. If it's on, it won't fix, but it'll just do the whole file. So let me show you what that looks like. Start, runs through, 176 elements are processed. It found 45 violations, and um, it processed the file in zero seconds. Uh, so in less than a second, I did my whole file. I say, okay, and I could have just as well run on a bunch of files. Let's see what happens when I do. Uh, I've got a, let me see what's in this folder. Uh, three files, eh, as good as anything, that's fine. So we're still in search only, we're not changing anything, but we're gonna say start. And this guy is, um, hold on, one of them might be very slow. Okay, good, one of them just took a second to open. And so we're done through all those, 531 elements were processed, 67 violations, so the file I was in had the most violations of all. And it did all my files in 11 seconds. Display my report, I'll bring this guy over. And this report tells me exactly, exactly what was wrong with each element, just like it did interactively. I get the same exact info. Which element is it? Um, I get the same exact info here. Um, and I'll close this. The whole point is we want that report to be usable. So you can well open it again. You can take this report and just give it to somebody and say, these are your violations. You either fixed them for them or you didn't, but uh, the guy needs to know about the mistakes he's making. Um, so if you're the client receiving files, you can send these reports back. If you are, um, and I think most folks here today are, if you're the um, engineering firm creating these files, you can take these and if you're checking your peers, files for your peers, you can give them that report and just go, look, here's what you did wrong. You know, just keep an eye on it. Or they can run spec checker for themselves and see where all their problems are. The whole idea is there's no one way to do it right. And spec checker helps you whether you want to visit every problem visit none of the problems, just get a report, or automatically fix everything, whatever it is you want, um, we wanna help you do it your way. There's a million standards and a million ways to do things wrong. Um, there are less ways to do things right. There just definitely isn't only one way to do it. That varies, and that depends on your situation in that exact moment. Um, so that's Axiom's spec checker. It's supporting software rule manager. And that's how they compare to MicroStation um, itself and how they work with MicroStation with DGN library files um, and other definitions to enforce your standards and how MicroStation itself works. Um, in closing, you know, at Axiom, we're working every day to you know, find ways to make your projects go right, you know, better, faster less frustration, um, and you know, more profit for you, more projects awarded to you because you've got happier clients, because you submitted on time, you didn't get slowed down because of standards compliance, or you didn't get rejections because of standards compliance. At the end of the day, you know, you're the one that has to get your projects done. And unfortunately, they're not done till the client says they're done. So, I mean, I think it comes down to, you know, what do you want to be spending your time on in MicroStation? What's the fastest way to get your projects done and accepted so you can start on your next project and basically do it all again? Um, but maybe do it a little bit better and better every single time, you know? And um, that's what we try to do as well ourselves is just keep getting better and, and help you guys get better. So I want to thank you all very much for coming today. I hope to see you again in the future. Uh, have a good one.